this is the first barricade uh, of an F-18. Uh, I think it happened in 94. On the Nimitz. On the Nimitz. Uh, nose gear wouldn't come down, so they barricade. Uh, this guy's a uh, Marine, and I'll play the video. It's pretty amazing. Um, oh, dude, that's insane. It's, yeah, we're not going to watch all four minutes, but most no. of it's covered. Uh, and here we go. Yeah, 207, did you lose that engine? Uh, fluctuating on the uh, on that engine. Roger that. Bring it back around. <sighs> Dude, I started breathing heavy watching this. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. My son's like, he sounds scared. And that chime. Yeah. Dude, hit pause real quick. Tell me if that chime does yes. not still freak you. Okay. Yes. I, I, oh. I immediately look to my left where the DDI yep. would be. But yes. Yep. All Every right. oh man, it go. is crazy. And yeah, what's your state now? Three hundred pounds. Not yet. <laughs> so can we put here? Pause that just for a second. Let's put this in perspective. Oh, dude. Because like I'm watching this with my wife, and she's like three hundred pounds. So it's like, let me tell you, that's about forty gallons. Yeah, and right? hey, uh, give what, or take. What? What what did we plan for one lap around the pattern at the boat? Was it six hundred pounds? I think it was six hundred minimum. Do you remember? Yeah. 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 So he's half of that. Oh, dude. But the crazy part is, like, dude, like it's so I put it in perspective. I'm like a T forty five fully loaded out, twenty eight hundred pounds. Yeah. Right. A Hornet was what like ten and change with no uh, drop tanks. Yeah, no tank was. No tanks is about 10.5 internal with a drop tank, maybe 12.7, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and he's down to three, 300 hundred <laughs> pounds of gas. He is a yeah. large American worth of fuel. That's it. Yeah. And much. the reason he went around on the first one is because, oh, that engine fluctuated a little bit. It's because it's fuel starving itself. That's yeah. Well, that's the deedle deedle is the, the cautions that are coming up associated with low fuel, which is because the Hornet uses fuel to cool a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Here we go. Anyway, sorry. No. 300 pounds. That's the rat out, so yep. that's okay. Call the ball. Ball. Right, your ball. 23 knots down the angle. He is not wasting any comms right now. <laughs> He's uh, like. Cut, cut, cut. I mean, he gets right in there, man. Yeah, like, no is. dragging it in. Hold on a minute. Cut, 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 cut. Check. Okay, yeah. secure your engine. Check fuel. I love that. <laughs> did you hear that at the end? I did. Here is, uh, here there's some great footage. Because you don't fully appreciate what he's you doing. You see this? 97, sorry. 97. So no nose gear. And then watch everybody clap. I love it. I love the Navy. Go Navy. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, you live to see another day. Yeah. The only service in the military where you can land a two landing gear aircraft onto a boat caught by a net. And you'll have people up there like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a golf game. Bravo. Exactly. Well played, um, sir. Well played. mid so, No. Yeah. Dude, obviously. I've only seen them practice rigging the barricade. So barricading an airplane, obviously a big deal. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm curious as an LSO, what would you pull out of that video? So, I mean, well done, first of all, right? I mean, think about the first time ever a Hornet, right? So every aircraft's different, right? And at that, back then, the Hornet was a tiny fighter compared to the things that they're used to seeing. You know, I mean, you S3s and A6s and F14. I mean, it was a small plane comparatively. Right. Um, so you've got your LSOs likely at that point, you've got both CAG paddles up on the platform, right? Very few other people up there. Um, thank God it's daytime looked like a relatively steady sea state. They've been, this guy has been working for a long time. It's not like they're, I mean, if he's at 300 pounds, like they have been trying to get that gear down 
doing everything possible for a very long time. And at some point it's like, well, we have the option of you're either going to try to barricade them or you're going to eject. And I guarantee you part of that decision was because it was a new jet. It was a Hornet. We're not just going to punch out and lose a Hornet, right? We'll bring them aboard. This is what we do. So, but if you, it, and it's right at the beginning, but he comes in on the first one and then the plane kind of, and I don't know if, if the engines fall down, remember like you would potentially go into mech. If yeah. You lost an engine. So it almost yeah. looks like he momentarily goes into mech the way <laughs> like the nose kind of wanders as somebody who's flown the Hornet and mech and you probably mm -hmm. have too, I'm sure. But, um, and then he kind of recovers and they wave him off immediately. Great call. It's like, dude, don't mess with it because, because you have that net, the wave off window is so far out. Like you yeah. cannot bring that jet close because the biggest threat you have is catching the landing gear that are down or the tail hook or whatever at the top of the stanchions. Cause now the guy's going to die. I mean, he's going to slam into the deck and that's it. You're done. It's a fireball and you just lost. So they taught us, you know, the wave off window is insanely out on this, but I mean, now you're in a situation where the dude has 300 pounds. Like I guarantee you, if he doesn't go, if he does, he knew if he did not stop on that pass, he was ejecting. Right. And as somebody who at least twice, maybe three times in my career, I had the thought that I may have to eject and I had enough times to think about it. That's a extremely uncomfortable situation to be in. Like to have right. that thought on the back of your head of like, I may have to punch out of this aircraft. So he has all that pressure. He has all the deedles going of the systems that are falling off because of the cooling, because of likely, you know, engines, not a hundred percent. I mean, if you look at him as he slides out, one of the cans is closed and one's open. So I don't know if he lost that engine very well, might've uh, lost that engine at some point in there. Um, unbelievable job, uh, great cut calls, you know, by the also, and if you hear, and, and it took me a few times to get this, but there was a, uh, an almost right for lineup call, but the guy stopped himself. So right as he's uh, in yeah. there and the <clears throat> LSO is screaming cut, there's another voice that comes on and you hear like a right and he stops. And that's the LSO trying to get him back on center line. But he also is smart enough to realize tiny jet take what we got because i don't need right. a guy doing the big wing down and making it he had it they knew you were in the wires i mean hey and cut 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 is just idle right yes you just yeah. you just pull them to idle and yeah and, and so what wombat was talking about with with uh with mech fluctuations so multi-engine airplane is designed to run the hydraulics with if one engine fails and i can't remember what it was but if you were a single engine the hornet you had to keep the, it was a good idea to keep the throttle up i think above 1900 pounds per yeah uh, like that yep. to keep so the, the switching valves from mm -hmm. fluctuating back and forth because yep. they when they would fluctuate sometimes you would uh that's when you would get the inconsistencies in the control surfaces and i it could actually we had a switching valve failure on my deployment Marine jet and uh, a poo. He ended up, he had to eject. It almost killed him. Uh, he was yeah. 1500 feet inverted, like 30 degrees nose down, ejected and survived. Uh, but, yep. but yeah, so man, watching this as, you know, somebody who flew the Hornet. Um, I'm just like, like, when I first watched it, I was like, Oh man, he's high. Like, like I thought that he was, but when you watch the, outside view i mean he just nailed it man it's incredible. Mm, and honestly for my liking now i haven't been actively waving in a few years but for my liking like maybe a little bit too a little lower like, a little too yeah. high i mean <laughs> dude like i mean this is hey this is this is but um, but here's this okay. is nitpicking here dude. yeah 100 but here's the other thing and it just as i'm saying that i'm realizing what i'm saying like he had no nose gear no nose gear yeah so, I mean, you probably do wave that a little differently now that I think about it because you don't want that nose to touch down, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was literally perfect, man. I mean, he literally oh, 100%. like a swish, right? He through the flew net. right into it, yeah, which is which yeah. is wild. I still think it's crazy that they can that we do that, plane. that that's a thing. <laughs> your place with nets, I know. How I'm about that? The E2 has its own net. Did you know that? No, yeah. There's a special Hawkeye barricade. No, there's not. It has two holes. No, 100%. Look it up. <laughs> Somebody will say it. it dude, oh. I'm not making this up. It has two holes because... A special you net. Went, yes, I yes. If yes. you went into the barricade with a Hawkeye or a Cod, it would chew up the barricade. So they literally have a barricade with two holes in it. 
Dude, so you really got to be on centerline. Well, remember every Hawkeye or Cod you saw? They were on centerline. You have <laughs> two true. and a half feet. <laughs> That's true. That's two true. and a half feet left or right, and you are hitting things. When you say it like that, I remember in the horn, I'm like, left lane or right lane? Dude. Yeah. Like, no, it was yeah. awesome. <laughs> dude, if I went back as an LSO after I flew the Hornet, I would change every one of your scores of every Hornet pilot. And I'd be like, really? Guys? Mine are pretty bad, dude. I don't know. No. If you, you do call me if you change, you change <laughs> any of last. Ever. No, but I just, uh, man, that's such a... And I don't know off the top of my head how many barricades they've had in the Hornet. Thankfully, uh, not many. Not, it's I, not all, yeah. If you're... At, listeners if you're ever in pensacola at the museum they've got a really cool uh they have like a piece of the actual net hanging up on the wall you can look at it touch it so to speak <clears throat> and there's video they i'm pretty sure they play this video in there uh, as part of learning about naval aviation but i thought it was a pretty amazing job and like it it always kind of drives home you know the the good work that the lso's have to do i mean the pilot right has to he's that that dude was calm cool collected 300 pounds man i mean how accurate is this gauge right so oh, dude, he's probably in a i mean i wouldn't be surprised in 97 if that was an alpha model yeah, yeah. remember the tapes yeah in the alpha like yeah, somebody yeah, said keep... like how accurate is it it's like mm, yeah. it just kind of rolls back and forth I remember those dude those were horrible yeah, like no i know you're like, I know. yeah, you call your fuel state and you're like i'm six five or seven three i don't know something somewhere <laughs> in there yeah like it's crazy man